welcome to this evening's session. So we're going to be talking about developing writing and supporting recording. And this is following on from last month's session, which was around reading. So we've separated those two literacy um, topics out really because we've got a lot to say and <laughs> wait about these topics so we've had the first session on reading and this session follows on and writing it it's a little bit linked and i will flag where that happens if you didn't see the reading one then um, they are recorded so you can go back and um, have a watch of that one so what i'm going to go through in the next hour oh, there's a long list of things in the next hour um, i'm going to talk a little bit about what we know about writing in pupils with down syndrome have a quick mention about um equipment then I'm going to talk about um, visual difficulties and we need to be really mindful of this in terms of writing about um, thinking about these visual difficulties. So I want to highlight those. Um, I'm then going to look, talk about letter formation, um, name writing in particular, and then writing a sentence. So moving on um, from kind of early words onto um, a more broader sentence writing. It is an hour. So it was going to try and cover a lot in that um, in that hour. Um, I've got to mention spellings and then just a quick note about thinking about additional supports and demands um, when you're thinking about writing tasks. And a final note about drawing and colouring, which obviously links into this kind of um, pencil control and movement. Um, so in terms of writing in children with Down syndrome, it will continue throughout school um, and it can be targeted and should be targeted um, throughout a range of curriculum activities. We know that children with Down syndrome um, need lots of repetition of skills and so as much as you can embed these opportunities for practice, um, small amounts regularly uh, is going to be beneficial. It's obviously linked to motor delays. Now, I'm going to say right at the beginning here, I'm not an OT or a physio. My background is actually um, speech and language and um, education. And I would like to see input and support for schools from OT services and from physio um, services. And obviously, if you've had an OT or physio come out and give you um, specific bespoke information about the people that you're working with, that's going to be the best. But for those of us who haven't had that kind of input, um, one, it might be worth flagging that at your next annual review, um, particularly if you're mu moving up to um, thinking ahead in terms of um, equipment, but thinking about has the, char has the furniture all got a bit bigger? Do we need to get in back in OT and physio to um, review the environment, but as well as individual activities and supports and equipment for that and that child? So there is obviously that I'd like to see. Um, whilst we're waiting for that, there will be programmes available within the schools. Of course, there will be that are designed for any pupil in the school who is struggling um, with those early writing um, fine motor hand-eye coordination type activities and if you've got that in your school if you look at what out is what's available in your school again it's going to be very very useful for our pupils with down syndrome so making sure that we have access to those sorts of programs and if you've got a nice little um fine motor skills group going on then our pupil with down syndrome is included in that um as well may well have hand gym type activities, activities to develop fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination. They may well come out of those packs, um, if not from a specific um, individual target. Um, they're all going to be, nothing there's going to be harmful. We might need to look at some of the equipment that's involved in those activities. For example, um, the size of the child's hand. Our children tend to have um, smaller hands than maybe some of their peers in terms of things like scissors, how far you've got to move your, your fingers is going to be tricky. Some of those tweezers are incredibly difficult. I'm not sure I can use uh, some of those. But looking at the sort of equipment that's available, we might have to look at adapting that a little bit. Um, more practices as, is needed. I said about repetition. Really, that is the key. And often we're not getting as much practice as some of the other pupils in the class. If we say, well, we're going to spend about, let's say we're going to spend the next 20 minutes on a writing task. If you're good at writing, you might write um, two or three pages. If you're not very good at writing, you might write one or two sentences. And then, of course, you're not getting as much practice. So it's always important to keep thinking about how we can get that extra practice um, in. And we may need to think about alternative ways to support recording. And I'm going to talk a lot about that in this session. Oh, there we are. Um, just thinking about that kind of ready for writing, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this as this session is particularly thinking about supporting writing. Um, those OT programmes that I mentioned that you'll probably have in, or should have in school, 
will include um, whole body activities, hand activities, and these eye hand um, activities. Um, whole body activities um, often work on the body uh, kind of on core stability, body awareness, trying to get children to be more grounded, have kind of calm bodies ready for um, ready for learning or ready, ready for the um, writing activity. Um, hand activities then strengthen some of those small muscles in the hand, looking at developing stability and strength when they're writing. Maybe an active muscles warm up before the activity um, begins. Things like um, Play-Doh, Theraputty, that kind of um, fine motor activities, screwing up little balls of paper, hand games, um, just to kind of get your, get your hands ready and start to develop some of those muscles. And then you've got that eye-hand um, coordination with thinking about activating eyes for spatial um, awareness. So it might be, um, examples might be um, picking up small items or um, blowing items with a straw or really thinking about linking what your, what your hand and your eye or your eye and your hand um, are doing. Um, and all of those things can be really useful to do as preparations for a writing task. So if you're going to be doing a bit of writing, maybe we've got a bit of verbal input going on that we're um, trying to support the pupil to access. Equally, we might be doing a few of these activities during that time to get ourselves ready for writing and to keep us um, on engaged um, whilst we're waiting for that um, input time to finish. In terms of equipment, there is no one recommendation. All children are different. All children with Down syndrome are, dif uh, are different. And again, that's where I'd like to see some physio OT input for those um, individual children. Um, what's very clear is you need to be sat with your feet on the floor or a flat, flat surface. Um, if you lift your feet off the floor and try and do just about anything, your body then starts to have to work really, really hard um, just keeping itself balanced without thinking about, oh, now I've got to pick up a pen, now I've got to move a pen, where's that, um, where's that going? And often, as I said, um, children with Down syndrome, hands are smaller, limbs are often shorter. And so particularly when you're moving up through school, making sure that the child is able to sit at a desk where they've got their feet on the floor and their desk is at an appropriate height for their arm, their elbow to be over the height of the desk. So we're not kind of sat down with our feet on the floor, but actually we can't really hardly see over the table. I've got my arm in the air to try and to um, provide that pressure on writing. Can I see what I'm doing? Um, so really important for the first step is to be thinking about um, seating and positioning. Um, then I would say have a try out in school, see what's available in your school. You'll have lots of supports for writing and getting a bit of a test of what's suitable for your um, for the individual that you're working with. So things like sloping writing boards work for some children. Like I said, not for all children, trying some of those out. I know one I've got one child whose um, visual difficulties mean things are best presented upright for them to be able to see and for them to be able to work on. Um, trying out different pencil grips. Again, I've not found one that works for all, um, but there's a huge range out there. There's a huge range in schools and having a bit of a test um, test out. One of the ones I found that's quite useful is called a handy writer, which is a bit like a hairband that goes around your wrist and you pop your pencil inside it and it provides a bit of stability of your pencil. But again, for some of my pupils, it works well. For other pupils, more of a distraction, I would say. Um, it's obviously important for our pupils, for all pupils, to experience a range of mark making equipment. So use of pens, use of pencils, use of crayons, use of chalks, use of um, painting, use of water on the playground. As much practice as you can get is going to be brilliant. Uh, when we come to writing and targeting writing, um, felt pen is often one of the easiest things to use. Um, it requires much less pressure to make a mark on the page and um, without much pressure, you can really clearly see that mark. So if you press very faintly with a pencil, it's difficult to see. And I'll talk a little bit more about that with the, with the vision. Um, and also then to make a mark whilst it's moving, you have to apply that pressure and keep that pressure, which again can be very, very difficult. So often with a felt pen to start with um, can be an easier way for the pupils to um, see and to develop their fine motor control. Keep pressing the wrong button. So as I said, visual difficulty is really important to keep these in mind. Difficulty seeing faint marks. If you think you're starting to write the letter D, 
you start and you start to go round and you're not pressing very hard and I can't see where I've really written. Um, how are you going to join that? back up it makes it incredibly hard for the children to see i've seen children do some writing and then i'll say well can you read that back they can't they can't see what's there um so it's really important we make it um what the children's producing really really clear for them to see also have these difficulties with controlled fine mute, uh, motor skills often things are a bit fast and a bit bigger and we need to really work on developing um those controlled fine motor skills as I said, pencils can require quite a lot of pressure to make those clear marks, whereas felt pens require much less pressure and produce that clear mark on the page. Um, similarly, those exercise books with faint blue lines or even faint grey lines are really hard to see. And if you're faced with a whole page of those, um, it's really hard to know where your letter is supposed to be sitting um, and where it should stop. Where's the line above if I can't if I can't see it? So really looking for um, use of writing equipment that the children can see really clearly, that, the, that um, is beneficial. It's not too hard to kind of keep that pressure as you're making those fine movements and to be able to see really clearly where the line, where the letter should sit and um, how much space you've got above those letters. Um, Right then, so starting off, we're going to be working on um, letter formation. Um, all, it is often a challenge for children with Down syndrome. Um, we have these difficulties with fine motor skills. Handwriting can be a bit of a challenge. It's not to say that's true for everybody, but for a lot of the children I see, um, it takes a bit more um, structured practice and repetition, like many skills. So I'd say consider targeting one letter or group of letters until they are mastered. Now, you're still going to be practicing writing in all different types of activities, but setting a target for handwriting or letter formation that says, right, this half term, I am going to, going to get the pupil to really focus on and practice and get lots of repetition of these three letters. And then I'm going to move on to how the next one will form. I'm going to be modeling them all the time. But these are the ones I'm going to make sure they get enough practice of to get to master those. And then I might move on to the next three, four, six letters. But of course, if you're practicing three every day, you're getting lots of repetition. If you're practicing 26 every three days, then you're not getting the same amount of repetition of that letter, one letter or three letters to, to um, achieve that skill. Um, what letters to start with? Um, you might want to have a look at what are the pupils' current or fine motor skills. Have they mastered up and down lines? In which case, those ones that involve going down are going to be um, a good place to start. Have they managed doing a circle and stopping? In which case, maybe some of those um, curly caterpillar letters are going to be a suitable place to start. Um, thinking about our children starting a reception, often what letters are in their name? Start off by practicing writing our name. Um, do we have a long name? With lots of different shaped letters in there might be a little bit tricky and I'm going to say I'm going to talk a little bit particularly um, specifically about name writing. Um, you might choose letters that are in target words so if you're doing some reading and I'll talk about linking in the reading in a second if you've got some target words that you're working on learning to read you might be working on learning to write those letters alongside you might be linked to your phonics to your spellings learning how to do um, the at words. So I'm going to be practicing that at over and over and over again. Um, it also might be wise to choose some letters that are formed similarly. So if you're working on one skill, let's say drawing down, you've got these um, long ladder letters is the first set. Or I think everybody calls them that, or I might have made like I'm sure I haven't made it up, but you'll know the ones I mean. So that you can see group one there, L, top to bottom, flip, stop. Can you master L? Once you have, then I might start on mastering T. Great, I can do L, lovely, and on the cross, that makes it a T, a t sound. And once I've got those two mastered and I can, the child can do them when I ask, then I might move on to um, I. Those are going to be my first three for the first half term, maybe for the first term, depending on the pupil that you're working with. I'm going to make sure they get lots of repetition of those letters um, until they've really got them, and then I'm, then I'm going to move on. So you've got their kind of group one, group two, group three, group four based on that letter shape that they start with. Um, just to think about then tracing and copying. Tracing and copying are skills that work towards, uh, can work towards independent writing. 
um, starting with tracing over the top, um, moving to copying underneath, and then copying further away. Those are two quite different um, skills. There's a lot of difference in terms of writing underneath the word and then looking over the board, seeing where you are, check, remembering where you are, seeing what comes next, coming back, writing that. Where am I? Looking up, where have I got to find? Where's, that's a much, much um, bigger challenge. So thinking about making sure we spend some time on all of those um, stages. With all of them, I'd start by being modelled by the adult showing the pupil what it is you want them to do. We know that our children have difficulties with verbal language. So saying, put your pen on the top of the line, go round to the left. There's a lot of language involved um, in describing how letters are, are formed. Um, round, up, down. Um, we need to know all that language and we've got to learn all that language. It's much, much easier for us to see what's happening. So the adult really clearly showing, don't need to necessarily do much talking at all, where we start, where we go down to stop and now it's your turn to have a go so modeling tracing to start with modeling copying underneath and um, modeling copying from the board modeling is the best way in terms of supporting our visual learning strength as you're doing that modeling you might start to um teach some of that language so you see you the understanding what up and down means when it comes to writing doesn't mean up doesn't mean down it's all flat on the on the table, but we're going up to that top line, down to the bottom line. They need to hear that. Can you go over? Can you trace? Can you copy? Um, uh, tall stick, whatever it, it might be. Um, make sure that the people can see the letters um, to trace or to, to copy. Um, yellow highlighter or grey, faint grey lines, again, very hard to see. We're going to do a bit of tracing. We need to be able to make sure that the people can really see uh, what they are aiming for. Um, loads of repetition of that same letter. Now, um, I'm sure people are thinking, no, oh, this is a bit boring. It kind of is a bit boring. But unfortunately, um, in order to get that repetition, um, we need to do a lot of that, um, a lot of that practice. And then, of course, once the people can trace or copy words, those then become independent tasks. As soon as your child can trace, you can leave them to trace on their own. As soon as that people can copy underneath, you've come up with the ideas, you've come up with the sentence, which we'll talk about in a bit. Once they can do that, um, they can be left to do that independently. They don't need an adult to be sat alongside them. So tracing and copying are two important skills towards, I would say, um, independent writing, and they can then be really important in terms of supporting some independent tasks. Then, of course, once we've had lots of practice, we've practiced the letter, we've seen how it's formed, we've practiced forming the letter, we've done it lots and lots of times, we want to go from writing from memory. And if you say, oh, can you write the letter? Oh, there's a lot of instructions there that are all verbal. And I've got to know my letter sound or my letter name. If you said, oh, do I know which one that is? So you might want to start by having a quick look. That's the one. Do you remember we've been practicing that one? Oh, can you say it for me? Oh, lovely. Um, what can you think about whatever, however your child is um, practicing that one, learning its letter and then cover up. Right. Can you write the letter? Ooh. So a suitable target would be something like to be able to write the letters ooh, or L-I-N-T as we all adults here this evening, um, using correct letter formation eight out of ten times by half. Uh, that would be a really suitable write, early um, writing target. Must remember to support revision and generalisation. So often um, we'll learn a skill in a particular activity. Oh, I've got my handwriting sheet. I've got those lines. I know what it is I've been practicing. I know what it is I've got to do. When I get to write, copying it in the middle of a word, I may have forgotten that's one of my target um, letters. So you might need adult support to remind. Oh, remember, all oh, one of your target letters. Where do we start? At the top. That's brilliant. Well done. You might have a reminder on the desk. These are my target letters. Oh, look, it's one of yours. Have a check. What does it look like? Brilliant. Let's have a go at copying it. Um, and then eventually moving on um, to it and it being an independent task. Um, I said I would mention name writing um, specifically. I think somebody in my team has a bit of a um, obsession with name writing. Um, all pupils with Down syndrome should start practicing writing their name with their peers. As soon as you get in to start and having a go, it's really important to have a go. Now, like I said, I'm focusing on writing this this uh, this evening, this afternoon, this evening. Um, all of those early precursors to writing, 
early um, mark making skills are going to be really important and we want to be doing lots of practicing of those but also some practice with a pen and having a go writing your name some pupils master this quickly and may have mastered it before starting school so some of the children who started school in september can already have a go at write uh, can already write their name and um, certainly having a very good go at writing um, their name some pupils are not yet mastered early mark making so it's hugely variable and often comes i would say from personal experience um, when the child has an interest. So if I've got a young um, young child, let's say a young girl, but stereotypical, but who likes sitting, who likes coloring, who likes mark making, what are they doing? They're getting more and more practice, which means of course, then starting to develop those skills. Whereas um, my other child who's into running around and um, building and climbing um, might be doing lots of other um, things to help develop some of those um, muscles and coordination that's important for writing, but they're not practicing that writing as much. Um, so we want to get children practicing as much as possible. Um, so some children, as I said, find writing more difficult and they're going to need activities such as name writing broken down into smaller steps. Um, they're going to need to learn the letters of their name. They're going to need to learn to order the letters of their name um, and they want, they're going to be developing those skills to write their name again thinking about that tracing that copying and then that being able to write from memory maybe having a look first and then um, writing it down so if i was starting with name writing for a pupil who's not yet at that um tracing stage at that kind of um, being able to control the pen i might also whilst i'm doing lots of practice of those um, motor skills i'd also be thinking about okay how else can you write your name so I might start with doing a bit of matching, selecting naming. There's my naming board. Can you match your uh, letters of your name underneath? We're going to teach you the letters as we go. This one's J. Can you find J? There's J. Find the same. So they're starting to see it, see what my name looks like, see what those letters look like. And they're starting to learn to order them um, from left to right, starting with that first letter. What does it look like? Even if I'm not yet sure of the name of them, still learning those, I can see that um, I can start to recognize what it looks like and I start can start to put it in order just like I can um, a picture. Those puzzles are nice actually and those letter puzzles for finding the different letters and putting them together. Once they can order the letters today I can stick them on their back of their page. I can I'll order this myself. Yep, yeah, I can put my name on there. I can have a go at matching underneath. Somebody's written it on there and I've got mine to, to match. We all know whose it is because it says on there that's what I've tried to copy at the top there. Um, then they might work on just mastering one letter at a time. I would normally go for the first letter. Sometimes I used to have a young lady whose name began with an S, which was obviously a very tricky letter for her to write. If somebody else wrote the S, she would write the rest of it. She was reluctant to start writing that first um, that first S because she knew it was tricky. She knew that she hadn't yet mastered it. But normally I would say um, you'd start with your first letter um, and you start off with tracing that letter, start off with copying and moving on to copying that letter until you can write that letter um, from memory and then I'm going to move on to the next letter of my name so I'd learn to do in the example there I'd learn to do j and then once I can do and then I'd order stick down a penny kirky can go ck um and then once I've got j I'm going to have a go at um tracing and copying a Great, so I'm going to do j, then I can trace my a, sticking um, kanika, kikinka, until I've got the whole name um, mastered. Whilst I'm working on that, just want to say it's important for our pupil to be able to um, complete the same task as everybody else and thinking about independence. When you say, oh, can you write your name on your work or put the name, put your name on the back of your work? How am I going to do that? So it might be that you're at a stage where somebody can write on the back and uh, people can stick their letters underneath have a go at matching it brilliant um or it might be you've just got a bank of sticky labels with their name already written on them so when you say put your name on your work i can get my label stick it on i'm done i don't have to rely on that adult to support me okay so that's kind of my uh, whistle stop tour of teaching um, letter formation and that kind of mechanics if you like and really the key being practice um i had one people um they were a year five people and i went in to see them and um school said that they'd had some input from an external professional who should know all about handwriting um and said that the pupil wasn't going to get any better from then that's as good as it was going to get and that certainly was not the case um that pupil had a teaching assistant who was had decided that her mission in life was going to be um getting that pupil to write um more accurately 
um, more legibly. Um, and certainly that pupil did a lot of practice and um, the pupil got a lot, lot, um, their handwriting really, really improved. So it's certainly I would say I've not come across a stage um, where that pupil can't necessarily progress, but it is about that, um, is about that practice. So teaching to write or record a sentence, first job when you come and help with a sentence is kind of coming up with your ideas. I'm a big fan of mind maps. So you'd have your word or your picture in the middle, and then you're going to come up with some ideas around it. So you're going to think about obviously being linked to the lesson. What's everybody going to be writing about in the, re in the lesson? What's the topic um, for this lesson? What's our learning objective? Um, when you're doing that mind map, it's a op great opportunity to target some letter formation. So if you think, um, oh, we're doing blue, you're right, there is some blue in there. I'll do the book. Oh, oh, it's one of your target letters. Can you put that one on there? Brilliant. Um, so any lots of opportunity for letter formation, bit of opportunity for spelling as well. Oh, um, land, how to spell land? What does it begin with? What letter can you hear? Oh, so you can be supporting the children in terms of um, some of those skills important for writing, having a go at letter formation as they're coming up with these ideas. But you'd certainly be, I'd be expecting um, to be supporting this. Uh, and once you've got those ideas, what do we do next? So for beginner writers, I would start by choosing some useful sentence starters to teach. So things like this is a or the, here is a, the, and look at the, I can see either would be examples of useful sentence starters. So thinking about our younger pupils, our pupils who are just um, kind of in the infants who maybe haven't got the language yet to be coming up with sentences. This is an opportunity to be teaching them um, how to use some of these high function, uh, high frequency words um, that we're going to be coming across all of the time and how to use those high frequency words in sentences. And this is where I'm really linking back to that session I did before on reading. So if I'm starting to teach reading, I would choose four useful words like this is a and the. So I can practice those as flashcards. I can practice those in adapted reading books. This is a um, planet. This is a Roman. This is a man. This is um, the, I don't know, spider. This is Spider-Man, whatever your books are about, well, we've got those high frequency words being practiced over and over again in terms of reading. Now is an extra chance for me to get those practiced in a writing activity. So I'd start with this is at and the, and I would have um, some sentence starters on the desk. This is a, this is the, and we're going to have a look at our ideas. And this is the earth. Great. I'm going to make a sentence um, up with that sentence. This is the C. Great. I can um, bring those words in. This is blue. Great. This is green. Fantastic. So we can come up with some sentences based on our ideas that we've come up with using these um, sentence starters. I generally be encouraging sentences that include words that people can read. They're going to need to be able to read these sentences back, both whilst they're writing them. So this, what comes next? This is brilliant, right? Let's spell that one. Where are we in our sentence? Let's go back and read it. You need to be able to, to read them. And of course, when they come back to their work later on to look at their work that they did last lesson or last week, we want to be able to read the words that are in there. Um, and of course, going to link to linking to any reading targets. Um, so there's my there's my kind of starting place. So I'd use the people's ideas. Um, I'd choose my sentence starter. You might be able to let them choose depending on if it makes sense or not. But I say, well, this is A, or you might have to change it to the, or take out that um, determiner. Uh, and we come up with a sentence based on the ideas that we've come up with. So it might say, let's say we're doing Romans. I've got, can you talk, tell me some ideas about this picture? It's a man. Brilliant. Let's do this is a man. Um, so you would take choose your sentence starter. This is A. Um, you'd write, this is a man, you'd read it together, this is a man. Brilliant. Write the sentence on a second strip and practice it several times together. So the child, again, if we're not yet reading, you're getting lots of practice of those words. Um, and then you cut it up. So we've got one sentence as a whole complete sentence. And um, what a second sentence is exactly the same, but cut off, cut up now into the different words. And I would ask the people to stick the first sentence in their book. Lovely, stick it at the top there. And now we're going to match our sentence. So what's the first word that we need? This. There it is, this. 
I'm saying it again, you're looking at it again, we're practicing reading it together again. This, fantastic. Can you find the same? Is it that one? Is it this one? Yeah, that's it. Stick it underneath. What comes next? Let's read it back. This, what comes next? Is. Right, I've got to find is. Can you find the same? So getting them to um, learn how to build a sentence, a simple sentence, and use um, some of those high frequency words that we're working on in our reading. Um, once they've matched that second sentence, so like I said, word by word, start at the beginning, getting them to reread, um, you'd start, you'd stick in those words underneath, getting the pupil to do it. Now, again, that's a really useful skill across the curriculum to be able to um, stick, uh, to glue and stick in things yourself. So this is a good opportunity to start um, to start to practice that. It also breaks the activity of writing, which is a challenge for us at the moment, into lots of different steps. So you can have on your visual timetable, first of all, we're going to do some reading, then we're going to do some cutting, then we're going to do some sticking, then we're going to do some writing, then you can do some a drawing, then you might do your reward activity. So it looks like lots of little steps that we're, that we're um, going through. Uh, you read the sentence together, brilliant, and then you do the, exactly the same thing again. Take another a third strip of paper, write the sentence out, cut it up, get the pupil to cut it up, and then you ask the pupil to match the words to their sentence again, this time completely independently. I put in there on their own. Uh, now, some people might be going, oh, I can't, I can't do that, we're only in week whatever we're in already of term. Um, it's a really important thing to work towards. So it might be you're in reception, you're not there yet, but really do think about when you're doing the, the, the first step, getting them to have a look, getting them to choose, getting them to do the sticking, because they're really working on this becoming an independent task. Um, and then what I want to see is, can they do it with support? That's the first one. And then can they do it on their own? That's the second one. And those two things are really important. I went on, um, a school visit quite a long time ago now um, and I had a teaching assistant doing that sort of activity I think her the boy she was working with probably year two maybe year three but I said right now we're going to leave him to do the third one on his own she's like oh okay I was like oh, over this way on his own leave him oh you're coming with me oh and she she really struggled to leave him there and um I actually wheeled her away on her future <laughs> and I said oh let's let's watch from over here um, and she said, oh, look, he's sticking them all upside down and on top of each other. And I was like, that's brilliant, because that's where he is on his own. And when we give it back to the teacher, they're going to be able to see this is what he can do with a bit of TA support. And this is what he can do completely on his own. And it's important that we're moving both of those forward. What he is doing is he's focused on his work. He's having a go. He's doing the best that he can. And he's not trying to stick them on other people's work, which I think she thought was going to happen. Um, and again, right from the very beginning, thinking about de developing that um, independence. Um, and then after that, finally, you're going to ask the pupil to write the sentence. You might be doing some tracing, you might be doing some modelling, um, but having a go at doing some um, early, uh, having a go at writing, it might be just some scribbles, some early mark making, some free writing, do not look anything like writing. But again, that's going to develop over time and it's going to be a really good measure of progress. Um, and then they could write, uh, they could draw a picture at the end or colour a picture at the end. Sometimes you might not want to leave them with the great work that they've just done. Give them another picture that you can stick in or another sheet that's going to stick in. Um, but again, getting that a bit of work on their own. If you've got a pupil who's at the beginning writing stage, but has some great language, I would say it's really important that we um, capture those ideas as well. So as well as coming up with the ideas around the single words around your mind map, if they said, oh, the earth's like a ball, you'd write down, the adult would write down, the earth is like a ball. If the child can't read any of those words, they can't segment any of those words, they're not going to be able to read that back. Um, so in terms of a writing activity, it's a sentence structure activity, it's not necessarily the most useful, but it is really important that we capture those ideas. So I'd be keen to scribe all of those in the book. Um, as well. And I just want to flag there, um, avoiding writing or matching words that the pupil can't read and doesn't understand. Sometimes when I've been into school and kind of talked through what I've just talked about, where we've got a sentence starter, we're getting a second copy of that sentence, we're showing them how to um, put those words together. When I've gone back into school and I've looked in their book, 
there's been loads of sentences that the child has matched, but they're not words that they can read. So actually what we've done is a almost like a puzzle, if you like, can you find the same, but we've not actually developed any of the word recognition skills and we can't read it back and it's not at a language level for the child and it includes vocabulary they would never come up with. Here are the pyramids in Egypt. <laughs> I don't think we've got those, those words just yet. So it's really important that we're thinking about where is the language level of this child and where are their reading skills um, in terms of supporting that writing. Okay, thinking about once our more advanced writers, having got said where we're going to start with. Um, so once the pupil can read some useful high frequency words, has men, men, mastered some sentence starters, can come up with some sentences, and is starting to be able to segment words themselves, thinking about our previous reading session, um, then they're ready to work on writing a range of sentences. Um, there's still loads of steps involved, thinking about coming up with the sentence, getting the words, holding on to those words, remembering the sentence, and then thinking about spelling or segmenting how you write the word, letter formation, as you do each word. So if they've got, um, here are the pyramids in Egypt, we've got here, how do I write here? Well, I can remember how to write here, how do I do a, yep, yeah, down, down, across, yeah. Is it that ear? Is it not that ear? What was the next word? So it's really, it places a huge demand on um, working memory in terms of, uh, holding on to that sentence whilst you're doing all those other skills um, that you're probably um, finding a bit of a challenge. So, very similarly, I'd start with the pupil's ideas. Um, I'd have their ideas on the whiteboard or on your mind map. Um, and as you're doing that, you'll be putting down on that whiteboard some useful spelling, some words that the pupil might not know yet or might not know how to spell yet. So they're going to be um, there. Get our pupil to um, come up with a sentence. I would say this is an opportunity, if you're providing support now, this is an opportunity for um, putting in some of that grammar that might be needed. So this isn't an independent writing task. This is where I'm going to put in some of that grammar. So what I might do is write the sentence down as they've said it, but leave some gaps on the whiteboard. And then we'll go back and see if we can fill those in um, together. Then I'm going to practice reading the sentence, just like we did with the sentence strip. But now we've got a longer sentence. Practice a few times. Think about what does it begin with and then cover it up and ask the child to have, what's the first word? Here, brilliant, you have a go at writing here. Most of the time, the first time you do it or the first few times that you do it, the child will say, oh, I can't see. You have to say, no, no, you can't see anymore. Ha <laughs> ha, you can copy as an independent task. If I'm here, we're gonna work on remembering this sentence and either sounding out these words or um, writing the words that I know that you, that you know that have been spelling targets that we've worked on or maybe using um, some supports like the whiteboard. Ooh, can you can you see the word Egypt written anywhere around um, the classroom? Great, you can copy it off of there. Um, now's where you're doing do your teaching. Now's where you're doing the providing support. You'll know what the child's targets are in terms of if they're working on initial sounds in words or if they're working on using particular digraphs. Here's where you can provide a bit of practice a bit of support, a bit of prompting for our pupils. Um, always be prompting the pupil to reread from the beginning as they write. Where are we in the sentence? Let's go back and check. Here are the, here are the what? Here are the, oh yeah. If they need to, they can have a bit of a check of the whiteboard, see where they are, cover it up, particularly um, when they're learning. Um, and I can't remember, I've said to, uh, said to the guys at Twinkle earlier, I've written, um, I've ex expanded quite a bit of this talk for this evening. I can't remember what my next slide is. So I'll say it now, but I might be coming on to it in a minute. The other thing to say about um, the whiteboard is at the end, it's a great opportunity for the, the pupil to have a look back and check what's right and correct any errors. Have a different coloured pen, um, write it underneath and fill in the word that you missed out or the um, the spelling you didn't get quite right, particularly if it's one of your target spellings. Have you got your finger spaces in there? Have you got your full stops in there? Um, so I've gone on the bottom there, just prompt the people to use any targets or supports as they are writing. So that, do they have a spelling card on their desk? It says, these are my um, high frequency spellings, or these are the spellings I'm working on this week or I mastered a few weeks ago. They're on the desk to remind me um, to look at, I know that, I know one of those, here's one of my words. Oh yeah, that's how I spell it. I can find it on the card and I know how to use it. 
Do they know how to use the mind map? I can look back up there for where you scribe some of the ideas, we scribe them together, and I can use um, that to complete my sentence. Having um, a vocabulary map, so you've got a topic map that says words that are linked to the topics. You might have, um, I don't know, Earth, Mars, planet, land, sea, whatever it might be. I can look on there um, and I know to use that. Do I use a dictionary to look up words? So have we made a, we found a suitable dictionary that I can access given my um, language knowledge and my fine motor skills? Are there any prompts around the room that I know to, to look for? Um, do I have some punctu punctuation reminders on the desk to remind me to use those in my sentences? So really think about getting the pupil to use those visual supports that you've put in place and to use them without. Where, where could we look for one of your target spelling words? Oh, yes, good thinking. Um, then I would say you do exactly the same, right? This time it's your sentence. Um, you might have a go at scribing it again on the whiteboard, doing a bit of practice. But this time you're going to leave them on their own to, to have a go. It's really important that all pupils have a go at some free writing. Um, I said to start with, it might not even have any letters in it, but to start to see those letters emerge, start to see some of those initial sounds emerge. Um, and again, that clear information about current level and in terms of progression. Also to consider giving the pupil the opportunity to have a go on their own first. That's when I'm going to be freshest. That's when I'm going to have all of my kind of focus and energy ready to go. Sometimes I think we always um, get into a habit of providing that support first, just going, oh, class of uh, writing about this. Here's some pictures. You'll get off and have a go at doing some writing on your own. Ah, oh, there you go. Editing. I knew I was going to say it somewhere um, can be an effective tool. Going back over again, those things we're working on. Quick mention about spellings, thinking about what are the class spellings? Um, are they appropriate in terms of the words that they are? My sister sent me a message tonight. Um, I've got a niece in year two who's got all of the um, spellings that start with a sound N, but begin with either G or K, things like um, gnome and nor. She's like, what on earth are we doing? <laughs> English is just horrendous. Um, so, what are we going to be using? Is she going to be using those in her normal work every day? Might not be um, the most useful in terms of how people with Down syndrome in, in the class. Um, it might be that they, they are suitable words, but you might need to think about reducing the number of words they're practicing each week. If they're not suitable, let's think about some useful, relevant words. Those sentence starters, those high frequency words, topic curriculum words. I think I've got a lot of words, but we're going to be doing next term the Titanic. Let's think about some words that are going to be useful when we're going to be writing about the Titanic. Some personal words, things that I'm going to want to write about. Um, might be about to write a letter to uh, a Christmas list, a letter to you know who. Um, might be useful words for me. Um, and also just to know that to think about what the pupil does during class spelling tests. If everybody's in there having a spelling test, I should be in there having a spelling test as well probably isn't going to be on the same words. Might be that I'm in there doing a bit of tracing or doing a bit of handwriting. That's my task, practice, writing my spellings out, but I'm in there and I'm going to give in my work just like everybody else. Or just have a go. Can I get the initial sounds of the words? Probably not for words like gnome and um, knight, but knife, but still. Um, <laughs> yeah. Spellings might be linked to phonics work. We talked last time about thinking about word families might be that you start by doing at, and then you think about doing um, changing your initial sound, and those are going to be your spellings. It might not be for a week, it might be for several weeks. Look, cover, write, check, used by loads and loads of um, schools, fits right in, feeds right into our children's um, visual learning strength. We want loads of repetition. Think about homework, think about um, getting the children to practice at home. Also, think about um, Oh, and have, if you're practicing at school, could be an independent task. I've come in and practice. One of my first things to do, or one of the things I do during listening, is to have a go at writing out my spellings, having a look, covering them up, having a go at writing them. Um, they might need to use methods other than writing when they're practicing their spelling. So using magnetic letters, using letter cards, typing them on a laptop. Um, need to review regularly. So it should happen throughout the week if useful or relevant. If you're focusing on some of those high frequency words or you're focusing on some of those phonics based words, it should be coming up in lots of the 
um, reading, writing, literacy, curriculum, topic-based work that you're doing anyway. So you're seeing that um, repetition. If they're not coming up, I would be thinking about how relevant are they. Other methods of recording, um, use of computer or, or laptop. Can the, can the pupil use a computer or laptop? Have they got a lowercase keyboard or an overlay that they can use if they don't know their capital um, letters yet? Do they need larger keys? Sometimes larger keys are not helpful. So as I said, we've got smaller hands, but again, thinking about trying out. Learning to type. Learning to type is an important uh, or useful, certainly, skill, becoming more and more so. Um, are they using a tablet? If they're using a tablet, generally, the use of a stylus, so you're practicing that um, fine motor control, very similar to a pen, can be um, get that extra repetition. And also, of course, use of programs that use whole words, things like clicker, where you can go well, here and just drag that down or click on that to make my sentence. Um, here is the planet or whatever it was we were doing. Um, can be really useful for our pupils with Down syndrome. Use of a scribe, so the adult might write, it's about the adult capturing their ideas, or um, if the, let's say, the activity is to answer 10 maths questions and we're not um, able to write our numbers yet, it might be that somebody else is going to write the adults down. If they're working as part of a small group or with a partner, it might be that our peer is going to do the writing and then we're just going to photocopy that. We're going to put in our book, worked with my partner, um, here's, our, here's our work. The other thing is use of audio or video recording. Um, this is what I wanted to say all about the topic. This is what I've learned in this lesson. This is my presentation about um, using that. Um, and I've just put a note on there about reducing additional demands. I've talked about the words and the cut up sentences while we're working on sentences. I've talked about um, the use of equipment. Um, I've talked about the use of a scribe. Also, the other thing to think about is the scribe writing part of the sentence and our pupil filling in some of those target words, maybe. So they're reducing the amount of writing they've got to do. Um, and just thinking really clearly about what's the pupil's learning objective. So is the learning objective to retell a story? Is it really about writing or is it about retelling a story? In which case, writing's not needed. Now, I'm always happy we're really pleased to see a bit of writing practice going on but it's certainly not going to be we're only going to get to the beginning of the story because that's going to be all of my writing ability i might write the first sentence or two and then um, somebody else is going to scribe my great ideas for the rest of it think about the people writing the learning objective because that takes a lot of writing sometimes in your book and our writing um, and the long date sometimes our Capacity for writing is over before we've even started the task. <laughs> Just thinking about what um, what's the necessary demands of this task and how can we reduce them where needed. Um, so moving that forward, thinking about longer utterances, complex sentences, linking into their speech and language therapy targets. Can they use connectives? Do they know how to use connectives? Can we spend a bit of time on um, working on more complex sentences? Might be using shape coding or colourful semantics in their... Um, speech and language work, I would be linking that into their reading and writing work. They're using a visual system like that, and it's really helpful to use it across not just spoken language, but in written language as well. Um, and working on the written form meets the learning profile associated with Down syndrome, lots of visual supports for things that we find quite tricky. So if you think we're working on um, where does where do determiners go in a sentence, having the determiners missing in a sentence for us to work out what should go there, or some of those high frequency words, great sort of activity to help me think about um, understanding how to use those sorts of words unjumbling sentences having a sentence cut up and i've got to work out um, the order of that sentence really it's all written there for me i'm not going to forget it I'm not going to forget the words they're all there i can read it back oh, that doesn't that doesn't read quite right doesn't sound quite right i'm going to um, rejig them around so now we'll finish on drawing and coloring oh. um Exactly the same, really. Benefit it benefits from teaching and practice, those small strokes staying in the line, how to translate everyday objects onto the page. So, oh, we're gonna draw, um, oh, look, we're gonna draw that red bus. Oh, it looks a bit like a rectangle. How do I draw a rectangle? Down, across, up, across, your turn. What colour is it? Oh, it's red. Need to find a red pen, um, etc. 
Keep in mind the visual and fine motor demands. Um, again, thinking about some of that equipment. Um, and I would say very similar steps to letter formation. You might start off with a bit of tracing of drawing objects, moving on to a bit of copying of everyday things that come up over and over again. How do you draw a person? Let's have a bit of a practice um, on that. And again, then becoming an independent task. Right, oh, uh, just to finish, writing is still an important skill for all pupils. Need to get, need to target handwriting and letter formation, um, spellings, sentence structure. Can be practiced across the curriculum. It's a great way of getting more repetition and think about the learning objective of the task or lesson. So I said, might not all be all about writing, but also think on the flip side of that, how you can get some writing in, even if it's just a little bit um, of practice. Mm -hmm.